on this instancer node, we have the primitive path. That's going to ask you, all right, where do you want to set all these instanced things within your scene graph tree? So let's say this is going to be forward slash bookshelves, and we'll say forward slash contents, like that. We'll leave all this alone here for a second. Go down to prototypes, prototype source. We want to say second input. That is asking you where is the stuff that you want to instance. Primitive kind, which is, I believe, up here. We want to say group, I suppose. That's going to say what kind of kind is the stuff that's being instanced. And then finally, for the prototype primitives here, we you need to have a special syntax for this. So in our case, we name this collection jars collect. I'm going to copy that. And all you say is percentage sign jars collect. Now, the way this works is that once you have this set up, you then go double click inside the instancer. And this is where you can set up the points that you want to instance on. So let's start off with the lop import. This, by the way, is the same thing as SOPs. So you'll notice that we have all the usual SOP nodes. For the lop path right here, we need to specify what we're trying to bring in. So you can browse for it right here. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I'm going to say shelves. That's that null we created up here. So that's bringing in this guy. Once we have our lop imports, we now have our shelves. From here, all we need to do is we need to unpack USD. This will turn it into actual polygons that we can use. And then once we've done this, it's just regular old geometry. So let's, well, actually, if we middle mouse, it's not quite yet. So with the geotype, we need to say polygons. And now we actually have polygons that we can use. Okay, let's also hide other objects. As you can see right now, we are instancing on every point of the bookshelf. There we go. And I'm going to pause the video as I do this, but now you want to select the areas that you want to instance on. So I'm going to highlight all this stuff and pause the video. Okay, and then once you've isolated these top shelves, it's just a matter of scattering some points. So Let's scatter some points. I'll bring this down a little bit. This will represent where our instances are allowed to be. Once you go back to the stage or the lop net right here, as you can see, we now have these jars being instanced. So it's working. It's great. Let me show you a couple more things while we're here. Let's say that you want to vary any sort of material information that's happening. Well, the way that you would do this and the way to think about it is you want to have attributes that live on each one of these points to override anything that's happening in a material. So as an example, like let's say you want to randomize the color. We, you could just set a attribute randomize. So this guy. And then all you do is you change this attribute name to whatever attributes it is on the shader that you would like to change. So in this case, if you're using a principled shader, base color is the name of the attribute that the shader will recognize. And that attribute, again, lives on the point which is being used to instance each one of these jars. So you might do something like that. Dimensions three, so that means RGB. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I think you might get the idea. Also, if like, let's say you had a material, you can take any attribute you want and then when it goes to render, it'll pick up the attribute so it doesn't have to be directly on the shader. It could just be any attribute that lives within your material net. And, um, and then that is how you would apply randomization to your shaders. I'll get more into that with my L systems update. So if you bought that course, then uh, I'm going to go into that in more detail with that. But that is instancing. That is the basics of it. And I hope that helps. In the next video, let's talk about layout.